emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K emphasis how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay. So, day before yesterday, what are the things we have discussed is, let's have a recap on a very high level. What are the topics we have covered? Okay. So the first one is how to design how to design our cluster and how big it should be right based on the incoming data we will be planning our cluster size and we had seen an example for that as well and the second one is right these are the high level things we have discussed right how we have to design few admin commands what type of operating systems we can use to install hadoop and how to add a new node or delete a new node what are the things that we have to keep in mind while uh, adding a new node because we have to do some cluster balancing and few commands are there to balance this cluster as well right so let's talk about what are the uh, types of modes that we can install Hadoop today okay and also few important configuration sites so once you get to know about these configuration sites tomorrow we can discuss on the actual installation process okay so this is the first one Hadoop can be installed and run in three different ways okay there are different ways to install Hadoop and use it because it can be used for a single mission or number of missions as well right so we have different modes of installation to run it on different number of missions so the first one is local job runner mode so we will discuss about that in the next slide okay and the second one is pseudo distributed mode and the last one which is a very important one and which is used in most of the companies is distributed mode so that is how the beauty of Hadoop comes with right distribution is the main important thing let's see the first one which is local job runner mode what it says is runs on the local file system and not on HDFS so earlier when Hadoop was installed they doesn't have a uh, storage for themselves in the sense they use it to use the local file system of that operating system itself so that they doesn't maintain any database something different for Hadoop so it is like our MapReduce program use it to run as a simple common Java program just they use it to follow the structure or strategy to run a MapReduce program but it looks like a common Java program but it doesn't, it doesn't actually follow the distribution of the data or accessing the data from different locations so it's like a regular Java program so that's what it's saying no Hadoop processes are required to run so actually we have different processes right in the sense different demons that would be running whenever we install Hadoop and start running any program so in jo local job runner mode no Hadoop process everything use it to run in a single one JVM that's what it is saying again everything runs on a single JVM so if at all if you go in login into your Hadoop systems and it's being installed in local job runner more you cannot see all the services running like name node secondary name node job tracker data node and task tracker so for example if one goes down everything will goes down because everything is interdependent 
ideal for MapReduce programs during development phase because it doesn't need to fetch any particular uh, information from different areas. So that is where just to test our MapReduce program which is designed in the way Hadoop programs need to be, it will be good only for that purpose but it will not give you the actual purpose of Hadoop like getting the data from different areas or processing in multi-threaded uh, way does run with certain limitations like only one reducer can specify it. So don't worry about this. Uh, I will let you know like what is a reducer and what what the function of it, how many reducers we can use and what is the reason of having multiple reducers and all those things. But as of now remember like in local job runner mode we will be able to use only one reducer in our map reduce programs. Okay. The next one is pseudo distributed mode. So this is the important, one of the important modes that we would be discussing about and even tomorrow we will be installing Hadoop in pseudo distributed mode. Okay, the mode that is currently used by us, not only by us, even if you go to companies and have a look, they would be using a pseudo distributed mode for their uh, test environments and all those things or development environments. Only in production we use it to have some other mode. But for their development environments and uh, the areas where they use it to write MapReduce programs is on pseudo distributed mode only. So what it happens exactly here is each daemon like name node, data node etc. runs in its own JVM. Basically each daemon runs independently. So let's see uh, what is a JVM. Uh, we all know I think uh, hopefully we all know like what is a JVM. It's like a Java virtual machine. So every process will run under a Java particular Java virtual machines. In the sense all were not interrelated. So everything is independent. So for example if one process goes down there is no rule or nothing uh, set up like another process also needs to go down. So this is where we are going to install through our VM simulates the real Hadoop cluster on a single physical machine because as we are going to install Hadoop on a single physical machine we need to run everything on its own in the sense all the processes need to be run on its own so that's the reason we are using pseudo distributed mode uses HDFS for storing the data so here we will be driving the data or we will be loading the data into our HDFS from our local file system and then we will be using uh, these parts in our MapReduce programs. Perfect for developing and testing apps before launching into cluster. So before actually uh, loading into our distributed mode or our multi-node clusters, whatever the programs we are deploying, we use it to first develop in this mode, test if everything goes well and running well in this mode and then only we will deploy in our production environments in a different distributed mode. Okay. So the last one is distributed mode. The mode for which Hadoop was really made. So no clashes or nothing, no dependency on each of things. Everything runs on its own JVM and multiple threads can be executed at the same time. So completely distributed. In the real world Hadoop clusters, data node and task trackers run on a single mode and all the remaining processes will run on independent modes, in the sense independent machines. In real world Hadoop clusters, name node, secondary name node and job trackers run on dedicated machines. So if you take a distributed mode, this is how the cluster looks like. So this is how the machines look like in distributed mode. So whatever we had discussed in our first classes of HDFS is of distributed mode only. If you take uh, pseudo mode, everything, all the process will run on a single machine. So machine 1 will contain name node, secondary name node, job tracker, task tracker and data node. So all the five processes will run on a single machine. And But you will be able to see that all these five processes are running and everything is independent to each other but if you take a local machine in the sense local mode you will not be able to see that all these processes are running or not and if one particular process goes down everything will go down okay 
So let's come to few configuration sites. In a Hadoop cluster, complete Hadoop package is typically installed on each machine. So if you take a distributed mode where we have set of machines, suppose again if we consider the same thing, here we have 100 machines. So what we will do in distributed mode is we will install Hadoop on each of the machine. So on 100 machines we will be installing Hadoop in a pseudo distributed mode or somewhere. So such that both all the 100 machines will act together and they will work as a distributed mode. Each node has its own set of configuration parameters. Suppose, suppose think like there were some 10 to 20 configurations that needs to be done on each of the Hadoop installation. So each machine will have its own set of configuration. So this machine may have configurations as I am just mentioning the name as confirm. There is nothing like confirm. I am just trying to let you know like the configurations would be different. Most of the times it would be same but maybe sometimes for name nodes and secondary name nodes and job trackers the configurations might be different and the configurations would be same for all the remaining machines. So that is how it happens. So it looks in this way. Most configurations are similar across the cluster. So all the data nodes will generally follow the same configuration. The name node might have a different, slight different configuration or an extra configuration that would be set up for name node. All the important configuration files are present in Hadoop configuration directories. So there is a particular directory uh, which will be created by default when we install Hadoop and all the configurations will go and sit into that directory. Typically configuration files are present in configuration directory. So, so the directory name would be conf. So once you install Hadoop you can go and see into this directory like what are the different files that were available and what is the setting that we have. But it's not much important for uh, a developer point of view but if you are trying to become an admin or something you can deep dive into these things as well. So most important configuration files or that you will ever play with are coresite.xml that is the first configuration file and the second one is hdfssite.xml and the last one is mapredsite.xml. So all the configurations will generally be written in xml files only. So XML files means they will follow a particular format or they will follow a particular script. So we have to write all these configurations if at all uh, in a tagline if at all I want to include any new configurations because by default you will have something but if I, if I want to give some new configuration then I need to write it in XML format only. So let's see what it contains. The first one is coresite.xml so as the name indicates, all the core configurations will be available in this particular XML. So for example, uh, I want to give like, I want to keep or change something related to my uh, master node IP address. For example, there is a particular IP address that we are connecting for the master node. Now I want to change that IP address to some address which I want to connect. So the master node is common for everything right HDFS will talk with master nodes MapReduce would have a communication with master nodes so the master node is like a common thing for our Hadoop configuration itself so that's the reason it's placed in coresite.xml so again if you take the HDFS site.xml it is completely particular about HDFS configurations only so whatever the configurations I want to give regarding HDFS may be the block size. Uh, as we all know the default block size is 64 MB, right? Now I want to change that block size. So what is the site that I would be looking for is HDFS site.xml because it is a site which will maintain all the configurations related to HDFS. Maybe the repl replication factor or 
few other things where HDFS will be taken care of, right? So all those type of information we will be seeing in HDFS site.xml. The last one is mapped site.xml. So you should be answering it now like what I will contain in my mapped site.xml. Just by looking the name you can tell me. Guys, come on, say something. Right. So, all the MapReduce related things will be given in this MapRed site.xml. So, suppose I want to change the IP address of my job tracker. So, definitely job trackers and task trackers will be related or they were be they are connected to MapReduce configurations only. So, I will have those configurations in my MapRed site.xml. So these are the three main XMLs that we will be discussing on. There are few other things also, but tomorrow I will be explaining them while I explain you the installation modes, I mean in the in installation process. So this is how you would see like, as I told you, everything will be in XML format, right? Uh, if you see or compare the core site dot xml and hdfs site dot xml this is how it would look like so uh, the first one is the version number which you are using right now and the next one is just the name of that particular site and then every property will be included in two tags called as configuration and property so whatever you want to declare, you have to declare inside a configuration tag and then a property tag should be given. So if you see here, a sample HDFS site.xml is given where I am giving the replication factor. I am trying to declare my replication factors here. So by default it would be 3, but if at all I want to change my replication factor to 1, this is how I have to give in my HDFS site.xml. So the replication name will be written as name dfs dot replication and the name the value would be now i am declaring as one because i am writing it in a i mean i am going to install it in a pseudo distributed mode right so i don't need to maintain any replications or i don't want it exactly how the typical distributed hadoop cluster look like right so this is why i use it to follow the replication factor as one only so if at all uh, admin guy or any other guy maybe uh, from a developer point of view there is something given or something declared by admin I myself can go and change this HDFS site.xml right for example if admin thinks like no one wants to have a permission on this particular site on this particular property he can give it as final so under the configuration property name value I will give it as a final again Property so and also guys remember every tag will end with a end tag in this space so it will have a backslash such that it indicates that it is the end of that particular property. So this is how it looks like. For example, if the admin guy gives this replication factor in this way, then there is no way that the developer can change this particular setting. He has to follow the replication factor as one only. There is no other option to edit this file. So the command would be final as true. If it is false means the developer or any guy can change his particular configuration on his machine. So and the core site is the same thing which we had followed in HDFS site again the name and value would change so 
fs dot default dot name. So this will tell you like what is the name node uh, uh, address that we will we are going to connect. So the default address would be eight zero two zero port. So the name node would be connecting to a port called as eight zero two zero. So every machine, I mean. Every type of setups will have their own uh, port numbers, right? So, for example, if you take uh, uh, maybe Apache or something, it would connect to 80, po 80 port. Uh, or else if you take uh, Tomcat, it will connect to 8080 ports. So, those are default ports. And again, it is configurable. We can give whatever the port we want. So, such that this particular process will connect to that port. So defining HDFS details in HDFS site. So these are few important uh, properties that we would be declaring in HDFS site. Not that uh, everything is mandatory, but a few things we would be giving. So the first one we will see is dfs.data.dir. So the value is I am giving. So as I told you, in a cluster, in a typical cluster, I would be copying the name nodes or uh, master nodes into different disks right so in order to maintain a rated property i will be copying those values to two or three different directories here he is giving copying the values to disk 1 hdfs data and again the same value is copied to disk 2 hdfs data so we are manually creating the replication for these type of values right so this is what the description a list of directories where the data nodes store blocks each block is stored in only one of these directories but if I want to uh, store it in different places also it is possible fs.checkpoint.directory so it will give you a list of directories where the secondary name node stores the checkpoints so every time uh, every intervals particular intervals I need to copy uh, fs image and edit blocks from my name node to my secondary name node right so this is where the location it actually stores your values so if you see the mapret sort uh, mapret this is how it look like so the job tracker is going to connect to the port 8021 by default and it is how it looks like mapret dot job dot tracker as a name so a few of the important properties again of a mapred.job.tracker is uh, the port value whatever we are going to connect and next one is mapred.local.directory so it will let you know like a list of directories where mapred you store intermediate data of jobs so what happens in a typical MapReduce program is whenever a mapper is executed the data or the outputs that were generated by the map job will be stored in a local in I mean in a local database but not on HDFS so the all the intermediate data is not used by us right we don't need the all uh, in intermediate data the, where the customer looks like is the final output data so that's the reason we will store all the intermediate data in our local file system and this is the directory where we will declare like where it should store in my local systems and the next one is mapred.system.direct the directory related to fs.default.name where shared files are stored during a job run so generally so many shared files will be there which were used by different data nodes right so those type of shared files will be declared in this particular property and the next one is uh, maybe an important thing which we can talk about is maprint.tasktracker.maptasks.maximum it will let you know like the number of map tasks that may be run on a task tracker at a single point of time so for example I am running a MapReduce program it can be running parallelly in different data nodes at the same time so this property will let you know like how many map tasks are running on my task tracker at a single point of time maybe I'm in my data node I am running four to five uh, tasks at a single point of time so this will let you know like how many tasks I can run on my single data node machine so the default value I had given is two in the sense 
two tasks can run simultaneously at a single point of time. In the sense, map tasks. Okay. The next one is reduce task. Again, the same thing. How many reduces that can run on my single machine? It the default value is two. One second, guys. Are you able to hear me now? Okay, fine. So these are the most configuration numbers. So HDFS can interact in many ways. One of the way is through web access. So if I if at all I want to see how my name node daemon is running, I can connect to this particular site. HTTP localhost 50070. So this is the default port and in whatever way I install my Hadoop. Okay. In whatever way I install Hadoop, I have to connect to this site only to see how my name node is running or whether my name node is up or not also. So for job tracker it would be 50030 and for task tracker it would be 50060. I will connect and I will show you these things today. Okay, So don't worry about this. So whatever the properties that we had seen till now for each of the site is very minimal. There will be hundreds of properties that can be declared in each of the sites. So these are the default links that will show you like how many properties are there and how many types of configurations we can give as per our wish. So maybe you can connect to any one of these and you can see also. Let me show you one single thing. See, these are the number of properties I have only for my core site.xml. So let me go down. So whatever we had discussed is maybe a first checkpoint directory which we had discussed. Hmm, what else we had seen? Uh, maybe we can we will see this hadoop.tem directory where our temporary files are stored. Uh, most of the times, uh, wherever you install Hadoop, you might be seeing this one also. But all these are like only related to admin concepts, and they are bothered about this. None of the developer is bothered about these things. Okay, again, this is the one fs default name. Most of the times, we will come across this also. So that's what I see. So you can very well connect to these and check like what are the configurations you have. Okay. And there is one more file called as one more important configuration file called as Hadoop environment.sh. So uh, before installing Hadoop, we would be installing Java into our Hadoop machine. I mean into my local machine. So where my Java is located and all those paths I would be giving in my Hadoop environment.sh file. So if I open this file you will be seeing like where my uh, Java version, what is the version of my Java and where it is located actually. So again it would be stored in the configuration directory itself. So it's very good enough that you go to configuration site once you install Hadoop and have a high level look on it. That would be enough basically. And one of the property I can give in Hadoop environment.sh is heap size. So any idea of heap size? What is that? 
Anyone can tell me? Anyone can give a try on this heap size? It's not particular to Hadoop, so that's the reason I was asking you. Exactly, Krishna. Right. So in Java, what we will do is, we will allocate some temporary memory to store all local data or values or intermediate uh, data that was generated. So all the type of uh, temporary memory will be stored based on the heap size that we are giving in a particular area. So here I am giving like export Hadoop underscore data node heap size is equal to 128. So what I am telling is whatever the temporary data that is being generated by my data nodes, they can use up to 128 MB or whatever the information I am going to you. If at all I am talking about task tracker, it can go up to 512. So this is how the heap size I can declare. So whenever you connect to name node web interface or something, it will show you that how much percentage of heap size is used and still how much percentage of heap size is left or something like those informations it will show you. So this is how the typical uh, environment.sh file looks like. So if you see the highlighted one, it will show you the home Java home path where I had installed my Java before installing Hadoop. So the next thing is formats and precedence. Same configuration can be specified multiple times. The one with highest precedence takes the priority. So suppose in a cluster I have 100 machines and as I told you on each of the machine I will be declaring the configurations. Okay, So there will be some precedence on pulling these configurations. The precedence from lowest to highest is site.xml on slave nodes. So this takes the lowest priority. So maybe my data node have some configuration my in my site.xml. That will take my lowest priority. And the second priority goes to site.xml on client machine. So there will be a client machine that would be connected to my Hadoop cluster, right? So my client machine takes much more priority than my slave node. So in my cluster, the admin guy has declared as replication factor as 1. So but uh, while as a client I am going to Hadoop, uh, I am going and connecting to Hadoop cluster, I can give the replication factor as 3 such that I will have my machine or my data gets replicated thrice. And the highest precedence will take through my MapReduce jobs. So whatever I declare in my MapReduce program that will take my highest priority. So suppose even my MapReduce program I will go and declare as number of reducers should be 3. So even though whatever the value I have in my MapReduce site.xml, this value will get overrided in my MapReduce site.xml for that particular program. So this is how the precedent goes. It's okay. Uh, the remaining things we can discuss tomorrow but for today I will just show you like the web interfaces and all those things So don't worry guys, tomorrow I will explain you like how to connect and how to start up your services and all. So for now, just have a look on uh, how the web interface looks like. So 
just let me explain you this particular concept so gps is a command which will show you how many process were running in my hadoop environment so if you see here there are five demands that were running or five processes that were running at the back end right so the first one is the data node second is the name node and gps it's just a service it's showing like gps through gps command you are able to see all those things so you don't need to worry about that gps and the third one is job tracker fourth one is secondary name node and the fifth one is task tracker so after tomorrow when you are trying to install hadoop on your system you should be able to see that all these five processes are up and running then only you can say that your hadoop installation is perfect and it is up to go further okay so i will show you how the web interface looks like so the default port is 50070 for checking the name node right i had shown you in the ppt so this is the site i am going to connect and check my name node status so this is how it's showing the name node is connected to localhost 54310 where this port i had given in my which site.xml can anyone tell me can anyone give a try on this the right krishna right you will be declaring this in your core site.xml so if you see the cluster summary here it is telling you like these number of files are there and these number of logs were there in total and this is the heap size i told you like how much percentage of uh, heap size is used how much is remaining and all those things so this is what it is showing how much dfs percentage is used what is the still remaining percentage and live nodes so as i am installing hadoop in my sudo distributed mode i have only one node right where all the processes were running only on single node in the sense the name node is running on the same node and the data node is also running on the same node so that's the reason i am seeing lying nodes as one for example if i go for a distributed environment and see i would see like number of nodes as 5 to 6 machines for example if my cluster is 100 size i would see like live nodes as 100 and if at all if any node is not working or something it will show you in dead nodes you can once you click this dead node it will show you the ip address of that particular machine so that it will show you like which particular machine has went down okay and also the name node storage so the image edits and all those things were stored in this particular area so and it is active in the sense for every particular interval that was given in default it is storing that also so let me show you other things also this is how my job tracker looks like so my job tracker is connecting to the port 50030 right so it is again showing the cluster summary so the number of nodes is one if at all if i am running any job maybe i am running some map reduce program here it will show you like how many tasks map tasks were running and how many reduce tasks were running okay and what are the okay there are few other things like uh, mostly you won't see these things but let me explain you also blacklisted nodes so it will tell you like for example uh, admin will consider like don't use this node at all and we are not going to use maybe node 98 in my cluster so it will be mentioned in my blacklisted nodes for uh, if it is if it is says like two or number two or something it will show you like two machine ip addresses that were not being used in my cluster you are not able to see all these things because you are running in a pseudo distributed mode we have only one single machine and one single ip address and definitely that should work right so any time it will have a value of zero only so here it will show you number of jobs that were running uh, any retired jobs all those information so the 
this is how the active task trackers as the task tracker is also up it is showing the there is a one single active task tracker and it is connecting to 4050 40530 port and the default values that i had given is 2 and 2 the default map tasks that i can run in my task tracker is 2 and the default reduce task that my, that i can run in my task tracker is 2 so all these things are like again configurable i can give as per my wish So this is how my task tracker. So task tracker is connecting to five double zero six zero port, right? So it will show you like how many tasks are running, if at all any if any job is failed, it will show you in the logs. So you can see all the reports here. Okay. Let me show you the configuration directories also. So here. i have listed whatever that were available in my configuration directory so few important things is the first one is core side dot xml right it is highlighted in green we will see what i am having in my core side dot xml see i am just printing the value what i am having in my core side so if you see here i had given one property not one uh basically two properties so all the two properties were given under a single configuration sites okay uh, even though i have 10 properties i will include all these properties into a single one configuration tag only so the first property i had given is hadoop.temp.directory and the value i had given is all the whatever the values that were uh, temporary values that were generated i will store into this directory And the next one is fs dot default dot name. So this is how the name node uh, I will connect, right? So when we had seen the local web interface, you will see you are seeing this one only, right? The name node is connected to local host five four three one zero. So that's what it is mentioning. So if at all if I if I give any other port, it will connect maybe eight zero two zero. That is a default port that we will be using in our distributed environments for connecting to name node. So if I give here local host colon eight zero two zero, I would be connecting to the name node, stating as it's connected to that particular port. Okay. Let's see the next one. Get dot XML. So here I am having only one single property. That is the replication factor. I had declared the replication factor as one. So that is the reason there is no. much more replication in my pseudo distributed mode if at all i go for a uh, original distributed mode i would give a, repl a replication factor as 3 and if i feel like my cluster is very big and definitely it's a very busy cluster i may go for a replication factor as of 5 also so it's all my wish how i need to give it and the next one is Site dot XML. So in my MapRed site dot XML, I had given one configuration where my MapReduce jobs should connect to. So if at all I have to see my MapRed dot job dot tracker in my web interface, it will be connected to localhost dot five four three double one to run any of the map jobs or reduce jobs. So and the last one is get open environment dot sh. So this is an environment file, right? So okay. Here, see, I had given my Java path as export Java home. This is where actually I had installed my Java user lib JVM Java six Oracle. So once I install Java, I have to Note it here, like this is where my Java location is, and also I had declared my heap size as two thousand. So this is what the default value I had given here. If I don't declare anything, it will go for some other value, which is a default value that would be coming with Hadoop installations only. Hmm. 
okay this is another thing which you can see one, one second guys okay if at all I give some path to my masters and slaves also I can give it here maybe let me show you one thing here so here as I am having everything on a single node it is just showing as localhost only so because there is only one master and the machine itself is this machine only so it's just showing you as localhost but if you go to distributed mode uh, it will show you the IP address of my master machine and the similar way for slaves as well my single machine is a master as well as a slave so that's the reason it is it's showing you as a local host only but if it goes to distributed mode I will see all the 97 machines if my cluster size is 100 so all the IP addresses you can see here, here when I give the command cat slaves so that's what you can know about that would be enough as per my knowledge and all the remaining uh, sites.xml generally you will never ever touch those sites these are the only few sites that you will be looking into or you will be uh, playing with whenever you are installing Hadoop that's what pretty much guys today so tomorrow I will let you know like how what are the different ways to interact with HDFS to, today I had shown you one web interface right there are few other ways also that I can interact with it, HDFS so first of all tomorrow I will uh, finish the installation process I will I will explain you and I will also share the document so that you can follow the document uh, but be careful before going or before having any of the step in the document because if anything goes down even I am not an admin guy <laughs> and most of the times you have to browse your internets to set it again okay so that's the reason I am giving you a note before itself so just follow the instructions carefully so that you can have it installed nicely and I am telling you guys in front that installation of Hadoop is not a easy task definitely it will take lot of time but there is no other go so that's what pretty much I have for today guys any questions So fine guys, thank you all for joining today's okay. Rahul have a question. You mentioned data nodes are usually installed in CentOS. Rahul, it's up to us like in which operating system we want to install Hadoop. I can very well use Ubuntu or I can use uh, I can go for CentOS. It's up to me like which operating system I want to install Hadoop. Mm, for now I'm following Ubuntu so for the whole remaining classes I will show you all the commands or whatever the programs I'm going to run on Ubuntu only there is nothing different that you will feel your instructions will be only for Ubuntu yes uh, but in general all the instructions will be same in any of the operating system uh, maybe one or two commands will change when you have a differentiation between CentOS and Ubuntu but everything will be in common right Krishna so once the installation is finished you recommend VM or on actual Linux uh, I would recommend VM Rahul because um, most of us we will be having a Windows as an operating system right that is the default operating system we would be getting so my solution would be like download a VMware and install on top of it but and one of the advantage is like I can install a number of operating systems on my VMware right I can have Ubuntu or I can have CentOS as well at the same time so whatever the operating system I want to connect I can just switch over 
so that's the reason i am asking you to download a vmware tomorrow i will let you know like what is the vmware that you have to download and what is the hadoop version that you have to download and all those things Uh, yes, Arjun. For yesterday's and today's class, I mean, it's all under a single PPT, so that's the reason I haven't shared the yesterday's PPT. So once this finished, I will uh, share you that one as well. And all the remainings, I think, uh, hopefully, you should have got it by now. Oh, okay. Uh, I will check with Wamzi. Okay, I have shared those PPTs with him. Okay, okay, guys. Uh, I will uh, I will talk with him. Okay, I have shared the remaining PPTs, whatever we had discussed in the uh, initial classes, like uh, the big data introduction, HDFS reads and writes. All those PPTs I had shared with them. So probably they can give you a link so that you can have a link, uh, look on it. But the cluster settings and all those things uh, have everything on a single PPT. So probably by tomorrow I will uh, share it. Okay? So okay guys, any other questions or shall we roll up for today? Fine guys, thank you all for joining. Let's meet tomorrow. Yes, Krishna, once the HDFS, uh, what I will do is I will share the re recordings topics wise. Okay, so once HDFS is finished, I will show you all the related recordings of HDFS. And again, once MapReduce is finished, I will share all the recordings of MapReduce. So this is how I share the recordings. Fine? Okay. Thank you, Krishna. So, any other questions? Okay, guys. Thank you for joining. Let's meet tomorrow at the same time, okay? Have a good night. provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.